All right, hello everyone, this is John, and today I'm going to show you how to create and edit interaction plots in R Studio. So I'm going to jump right over to R. I've already opened up my R script, and I'm going to show you step by step on how I would create an interaction plot, and then some of the steps I would take to edit that plot in order to make it more visually pleasing and aesthetic to uh, viewers and to yourself, especially if you have to share this with other people. So um, I've already uploaded a data set, uh, but there's a research question attached to this data set, and I'm going to read the question as it'll provide some context to viewers. So the question is, is there a two-way interaction between men and women uh, employees in the amount of close friends they report at work and their overall job satisfaction? So if I quickly uh, open up this data set, what I have here is male and female workers at a certain job site being rated at how many close friends they feel like they have at their at, at their job and really to see if the amount of close friends they report has any impact on their job satisfaction. I'm not running any official analysis for this but I just wanted to provide a question to provide that context. So we have our data set already loaded um, we can make sure that we have the heads of the data correct and there's no error. So yeah, we have the ID number, sex, which is really the gender of the individual, um, friend, how many close friends they report, and job satisfaction. So the first thing I would do is run what I have here under step three, which is a very standard interaction plot. Um, and a code for a very standard interaction plot is literally interaction plot followed by brackets, where from your data set, you're going to select your first variable, which would sit on the x-axis, your second variable, which would be the trace variable, which is like a grouping variable, and then your third variable, which is your response variable, which would sit on the y-axis. So based on this code I have here, where I have friend on the x-axis, sex or gender as the grouping variable, and then overall job satisfaction, I can select this and run. And as you can see, I already have an interaction plot. Very simple, very easy to do, but there's a lot of error problems with this interaction plot. Uh, for one, the labels aren't very clear. It says here below data one uh, friend, data one sex, and then it says mean of data one job satisfaction. They're not the most appealing labels to have, and uh, so that's we're going to change those. But then at the same time, uh, along the y-axis, we have values going from 8, 7, uh, 6, and 5. We're going to change that because let's just say the scale we're using was measured on a scale from 1 to 10. So we'd like to represent that entire scale on the uh, y-axis. Um, and then on the x-axis, we're going to provide labels here. So of course, they're saying here whether they have zero close friends, one close friend, two close friend, or three close friend. But for the sake of this uh, tutorial, I'm going to change these into uh, actual labels just to show you how you can do that yourself. And then finally, with the legend here, we have sex, which we're going to change. We don't want sex. We're going to change it to gender. But then we have one and zero. We don't know which one is which. And if you were to share this interaction plot with someone, they probably won't understand which group is which. So let's continue down, and I'm going to show you really um, the interaction plot I just did. Um, this is the code I ran, but to break down this code a bit further in case it may be confusing to people, um, there's other ways of running this exact code just like this below. So for example, um, here I have x factor equals friend and I have in this little note up above x factor is really the variable for your x axis. I have trace factor which is sex which is really the grouping variable as I mentioned before and then response we have job satisfaction and for there you can see that's going to be the variable on your y axis. So if you restructure your code for an interaction plot in this way it's going to clean it up just a bit but not too much so we can quickly look here see how that looks let's run and there you go so you can see that all it really did was cleaned up our values a bit so it's now saying friend sex and mean of job satisfaction 
that could be okay in some situations. It might work perfectly just for you. Uh, but we're going to continue cleaning it up because it's still not that visually pleasing. Um, so I'm going to continue scrolling down below. Um, this is just another method of running uh, the code up above. As you can see, this code's got a lot of... Uh, it's a bit wordy, this code. So you can really just run this exact same code to get the exact same one. So if I click run, it literally didn't change. It's literally the same code. But we're going to go on to step four now. Oh, actually, I made a mistake there. That didn't actually properly run. But the idea is if you run it, the, the plot on the side doesn't change. It's the exact same. But we're going to go into step four now. And in step four, we're actually going to start editing uh, our interaction plot. And we're going to start making some changes. Uh, this looks a bit messy, so let me clean it up a bit. Here we are. So what we're going to do here is just like the plot up above, we are putting in our data one, which is our uh, friend variable, which is on the X axis, data one, which is the sex variable, which is the grouping variable and data one, which is overall job satisfaction. And here I go, I'm mentioning here some of the options that we can change and we're going to change them below. So the first option here is X lab, which is going to help you label your X axis. So below for X lab, where down in this section over here, I have friend. I'm going to change that to close friends at work. So that's going to be my new label for the uh, X axis. The next option, we can change the label for the Y axis. Oops. Um, and that's what I did right here. So under Y lab, we have overall job satisfaction. So for the Y axis, we'll have instead of it saying mean of job satisfaction, it'll say overall job satisfaction. And for the X lab or the X axis, it'll say close friends at work. So already we've changed our two uh, axes with better labels. The next option here is main, where you can create a title for your plot. So here under main, I've said main equals and make sure you have these things in double quotations or else uh, it won't work properly but you can see under main here in double quotations i have employees overall job satisfaction and close friends at work so once i run this code there will be a title that appears up above here with that uh, main heading now now the next option is called y limb and this is going to provide a range of values along the y axis as we can see at the plot right now, it goes roughly between nine and four. Um, we want to change that to capture the full length of the scale, which was really from one to 10. So for Y limb, we have C brackets one comma 10. That's going to now capture that whole range on the Y axis now. And now the trace label is really going to be us relabeling our legend. Right now, if we look at our legend, it says sex. I don't really want it to say sex. I wanted to say something else. So under trace label, I've written gender in double quotations. So sex is going to change to gender. And now the next thing here is type. And type really puts markers on your plot. So here I've selected type B. Uh, there's other types you can select, but for B here, it's going to put little dots at each section of the plot uh, where these uh, main points are being hit. And then the next section we have is uh, color, COL. Um, this is going to add color to your plot. And all you can see here in the code, it's COL equals C. I'm going to create one line red and the other line green. And then finally, um, oh, one thing, another thing here is PCH. PCH, which I have highlighted up above here, is going to customize the markers on your plot. So instead of uh, just being simple circles that, or simple periods or dots that would appear along the lines, I've created numbers here, 19 and 17, which are going to create unique dots on each line. You can change these values to different numbers and uh, it'll create different uh, val different uh, shapes really along the line. So for example, I once tried 40 and instead of it putting periods, it put like brackets along, it's different. And then fixed here now is just really ordering the factors based on your data set. 
So it's really, it, and you can see that's already been run here. Um, it's ordering things in a numeric sense. So it's going from lowest to highest. We're gonna rearrange this later just to try other options as well. But uh, let's run this now. And here we go. So already um, the Y axis looks better. It's capturing the full length of the scale. We have better labels along our uh, interaction now. I could spread this out a bit more. We have better uh, labels on our, um, on our axes now. And uh, we have a title. It looks a lot better. Um, but we're going to go along and uh, go to the next step now. And in this next step, we want to properly label the legend and X axis. So in this situation, uh, the legend is still 0, 1, which we don't really want. We want it to be clear male and clear female. So we're going to relabel that. And then we also want to relabel the x-axis. So right now it's 0, 1, 2, 3. And for close friends at work, that does actually make sense as they are numeric values. But we're going to provide something else here just for sake of example. So the method I would use in order to create these changes along the legend and x-axis, it's really going to involve recoding the variables in the data set. So instead of replacing the uh, variables in data 1, I'm going to put data 1 into data 2, run that, so I have an extra copy of the data set, and within data 2 data set, I can start recoding these variables. So as I was mentioning before, there's no package required to run interaction plots, but in order to run a recode function, you need library car. So I'm going to select library car and run, and right away, the first thing I'm going to do is recode the legend. So in data, uh, data two, which is the sex variable, which I'm going to relabel as gender, under the sex variable, wherever it says zero in double brackets, I want it to now replace as male. And wherever it says one, I want it to replace as female. So I can run that. And now, hypothetically, it has now changed uh, that variable within the data two set. Uh, data two data set. Um, I'm purposely putting everything in the data two here for recoding, as um, you might not want to mess around with the data one, especially um, if it's going to if you're going to run analysis, it's not going to prefer some of these variables be string values, which I'm changing them to. Okay, the next step now is now we want to start uh, re-editing or recoding the friend variable. Originally, friend variable 0, 1, 2, and 3. Here, we're going to recode uh, data to friend, where 0 is now going to equal low, 1 is going to equal medium, 2 is going to equal high, and 3 is going to equal very high. So I can select this as well and click Run. So now, We've technically recoded both variables with string values. So when we run this plot again, we will now see string values instead of numeric values. So let's do that. Uh, let me just stretch this a bit just to make it look a little more pleasing. So all this code that I have here is exactly the same code as above. So meaning when I run these two codes, it's really going to produce the exact same uh, plot. Uh, the only difference here is this is I've restructured this as data two instead of data one because that's where I've made those changes to those values. So let's highlight this and run. And you can see a few things have now happened here. Um, of course, when we look at the legend, we now have female as a one and we have male as zero. So that's great. We, it's more clear that which line is representing which gender. And then we can see here at the bottom, we've now recoded those numeric values as low, medium, high, and very high. But you've probably noticed that the high value is now being placed at the beginning and the very high value, which is technically in the right place, but it's now being scrambled. And uh, this is a problem because it's totally messing up the way we would want to view this graph. And it's making relationships that probably do not exist. So that's where step seven now comes into play. 
is where we're going to have to reorder the labels on the x-axis. This can happen. Um, so really what you're going to have to do is reorder that one variable and pretty much tell it how you want the variable to be structured and in what order. So to, in order to do that, we're going to create a factor. And the factor is going to have four levels. And the four levels are low, medium, high, and very high. So here's the factor. I'm just going to call the factor x1. And it's going to equal factor data to friend. And the levels, which equal C in brackets, is going to be double quotations, low, medium, high, and very high. So by running this, I'm creating a factor now saying I want these values in this order. So let's run. And you can see up above in the global environment, it's created a factor x1, which has four levels, low, medium, etc., etc. So now that we've done step seven, we've reordered our labels for the x-axis. So now when we run step eight, we should see the finalized product with these values in their correct order. One thing to notice here is that the, the plot here hasn't really changed much from the plot here. The only difference is that instead of it saying data to friend, which it says here, it's now saying x1 because x1 is the factor where we've put an order to it. So let's run this now. And there you go. You can see that now the interaction plot is being ordered in the way it was designed and the way we intended to display the data. Uh, we have all of our labels correct. We have a clear indication on which group is which. And along the y-axis, we have the full scale. And along the x-axis, we have things in the order they were intended to be in. And we have our title as well. So that is pretty much how you do an uh, interaction plot and how you edit it in R. Of course, there's many other options to do and many other options to consider when editing these plots. Uh, but this is one way of doing it, and hopefully it serves people some benefit. Thank you so much for watching.